everyone, welcome to North Star Kids Virtual Easter Family Experience. We cannot wait to take you and your family on a journey to the cross together. You are about to experience six thought-provoking virtual stations where we hope we bring the story of the cross to life. But before we begin, there's a couple of things you need to grab out from your house. First, you need to grab out something that makes a lot of noise for each family member. Pots, pans, spoons, whatever you can find, grab them out and bring them where you're at. Next, you'll need small pieces of bread for every family member, or crackers will work as well, juice for every family member, a washable marker, you'll need glass cleaner, a mirror, you can find that when it's time, and then also and last, you will need a flashlight. That's it. So go find those items before we get started, and we hope that this virtual experience brings you and your family closer to Jesus than ever before. Shalom, welcome to Jerusalem. Everyone in town is so excited because guess what? Jesus is coming and we are having a parade to celebrate him. This is the day we now call Palm Sunday. And when Jesus lived on earth, the people praised him by waving palm branches and shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna. They were so excited to see him. Every time I say Hosanna, I want you to make a really loud noise with the noisemakers that you picked from your house and then jump up and down. Are you ready to try it? Let's go. Hosanna, Hosanna. Good job. You guys were super loud. I could hear you all the way over here. Can you believe it? The big day is coming because the king is coming to our city. I can't believe it. Jesus was riding into Jeru Jerusalem on a donkey, just like the one I have here next to me. And as Jesus passed by, people shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna, and they would wave their palm branches and they would also lay their coats down on the ground so that the donkey could walk on them. Then they continued to shout, Hosanna, Hosanna. The celebration was a few days before Jesus died and rose again. And after Jesus' parade, he met with his disciples to have his very last meal. So at this time, you're gonna grab your family guide booklet and your juice and your bread and get ready for your next virtual station. Welcome to the Last Supper. It was Jesus' last evening, and he wanted to spend it with his best friends, the disciples. Jesus and his disciples sat around the table. His disciples were quiet. They were worried because a lot of people wanted to kill Jesus. He was becoming so popular. Jesus took the bread and thanked God for it. He said to his disciples, Take this and eat it. This is my body which was given for you. As a family, take your communion cup and pull out your bread. Eat it together. Next, Jesus picked up a full cup and he said, take this, this is my blood, which was poured out for you to forgive your sins. Jesus and his disciples all took a sip from the cup. As a family, take your juice and drink it. Jesus and his disciples sat around the table for a long time. They were celebrating everything that had happened. Now, pause the video and as a family discuss why you think it was so important for Jesus to spend his last evening with his disciples. Talk about some ways that as a family you can spend time together and show each other your love. Welcome to the Garden of Gethsemane, friends. After dinner, Jesus brought the disciples to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. Jesus went further into the garden so he could spend some alone time with God. You see, Jesus knew exactly what was about to happen, and he was scared. The Bible actually tells us that Jesus was so scared that he sweat blood. Can you imagine being that scared? Even though Jesus knew what was about to happen, and even though he didn't really want to go through with it, he knew he needed to trust God and obey what God wanted him to do. Shortly after, the Roman soldiers came and arrested Jesus and took him away. Now, he didn't ask for help. This is Jesus. He could have called down 10,000 angels to come and save him, 
But Jesus didn't. He went anyways. He knew that we needed our sins to be forgiven in order to be a part of God's family forever. And in order for our sins to be forgiven, Jesus knew he had to be the one to take our punishment of sin and die on a cross. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you know what sin is? Sin is anything that we do that disappoints God. Anything that we do, big, small, or tiny, that goes against who God is and what he stands for. Jesus came to this earth to die for those itty bitty tiny little sins that we commit just as much as he came to die on a cross for those really big sins that we've done before. In the Old Testament, in Jeremiah 17, 1, it tells us sins are illustrated as being engraved into the tablets of people's hearts. What this means is that sin starts in the heart. Let me ask you a question. Is it harder to do something right or do something wrong? It's a lot harder to do something that's right. Why is that? Well, actually, the minute we were born, the minute we took our first breath into this world, we were born into sin. Sin was placed in our lives. We don't have a choice. That's just where, where we live. It's the world and it's broken. But Jesus came to change that. You know, if we accept that Jesus died and that he rose again three days later, and if we accept the fact that he died on a cross to forgive us of our sins, all of those things, if we believe it, our sins will be erased. No matter how deep those sins were engraved into our lives, Jesus offers us a clean slate by branding us with who he is, by creating in us a pure heart. So right now, I want you to get together as a family, grab your washable marker, and your glass cleaner and go into a room that has a mirror, maybe your bathroom or your bedroom, wherever. And here's what I want you to do as a family in just a moment. I want you to each write down a sin that you struggle with. It may be a really tiny one, like sometimes you lie to your parents. It may be a really big one, like you were really struggling to get along with your brother and sister all the time. Whatever it may be, I want you to be honest and I want you to write it down on that mirror. Then I want you to take the glass cleaner spray it on and wipe it away. It's pretty cool how it just erases everything. You know, that's exactly what Jesus did when he came to this earth and died on a cross. The minute he took his last breath, your sins and my sins and the sins of the entire world were erased. So do that together as a family now. When Jesus was arrested in the garden, he was taken before Pilate and he was beaten with a whip that looks similar to this. It had pieces of bone and metal and rock, broken pottery. Can you even imagine how much that would hurt? Afterward, he was taken and he was mocked. King of the Jews, they cried and they laughed at him. And then they put a crown of thorns on his head. Looks like it would hurt, right? After they put the crown of thorns on his head, he, he made his way to Calvary, where he held this huge cross, and he was nailed to the cross with three nails that may have looked similar to these. Now you may be asking, why in the world would somebody do something like that? And it's the simple fact that God loved us that much, that he wanted to, he wanted to free us from the sin and sin is all, are all of the bad things in life that we do that separate us from God. And he just could not bear that. So he did, he gave us the, the ultimate gift in making sure that we would have the opportunity to accept the forgiveness that he has given us. On a cross, he breathed his last breath. And from there, we have the option to accept that forgiveness. So at this time, gather your family together and pray. Welcome to the tomb. 
After Jesus died on the cross, he was placed inside of a tomb where a giant stone, just like this one, covered the entrance. Three days after Jesus died, he was placed inside the tomb, the stone was rolled away, and Jesus was alive. How exciting! Do you guys want to come inside with me and see the place where Jesus lay? Come, come with me. The reason we have Easter is to celebrate that Jesus is alive. You guys, Jesus is alive. We celebrate Easter to remind us that God loves us so much that he sent his one and only son to die on a cross and take away our sin. In John 8, 12, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never live in darkness, but will have the light of life. Before Jesus died for us, we were living in the dark by sin. But when Jesus died on the cross, his body was broken for us so that we could follow his example and become a light of the world just like he was for us. And we become a light of the world through him and for him. From the dark came light. When Jesus was here on earth, he wanted everyone to know of the good news. He wanted to share his love for us. And he wants us to do that by being the light of the world. We can tell others about Jesus by being the light of the world and sharing the good news of what happened on Easter Sunday, that he is risen and that he came to die for our sins. And we can be a light to others by sharing the good news and the good things that Jesus has done for us throughout our time here on earth. So at this time, take a minute with your family, pause the video and talk about ways that Jesus has done something amazing in your life that you can share with others so that they can get to know him as well. The Bible tells us that not only is Jesus the light of the world, but he is also the living water. He is the source of our salvation. The Bible tells us that when we accept Christ as our Savior, that he will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory in Jesus Christ. This means that when we are God's child, he will take care of all of our needs. Remember that Christ died on the cross for us because he loves us so much and wanted to forgive us of our sins. But that's not the end of the story. Three days later, God rose him from the dead. Now God is in heaven calling to you because he wants you to be a part of his family. These rocks represent God's love for you and everything that he has done for you. Take some time today to go outside and find a rock, whether it's big, small, or tiny. Let this rock remind you of God's love for you, that he loved you so much he gave his life for you. Psalm 62.2 says, Truly he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress and I will never be shaken. Thank you for journeying to the cross with us today. We hope that you have enjoyed your time here with us. Please don't forget to join us for our Easter services, either online or in person, on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. We hope to see you there.